Hi, this is Marlene, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Whether you're watching a video or listening to a podcast, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. Links to videos or mp3 files can be found on MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to MarlenePardo.com for information on new book releases. I narrate several podcast series that can be found on major podcast platforms and can also be listened to via Alexa, Sonos, and other home systems. Look for Supernatural Storytime for scary storytelling, Nightshade Diary for classic horror and adventure stories, Stories of the Supernatural for interviews with different guests on the show. If you want to get noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird, you can visit Strange Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com or find us on Blogspot. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. This is Morley with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I'm doing good. Still in the throes of uh, of uh, unpacking, but okay, you know, that's, I'm just giving you my little like, oh, woe is me, you know, a wimpy me. But uh, yeah, things are progressing. Things are progressing here on the farm. Uh, like I told you before in the last show uh, over here, because there's actually some seasons I have to get to planting. So it's given me a good excuse to go to some nurseries and buy some uh, fruit trees and um, also uh, plants and everything and gardening. And but see, that's the good part. You know, after you buy the plants comes the planting part. So yeah, you know, you, you, you heard, you, you guys heard me, the ones that have been around for a while complain about when I was doing the farm down in Homestead. So, but it's different, it's different. But plus the soil here is much different. Uh, anyway, today I have a super special guest. This is the first time on the show, and I think you're really going to enjoy this guest, her name. And by the way, because I know a lot of you have been asking me, Marlene, when are you going to bring a psychic to the show? Because I've had some in the past. And I, see, this is for those of you who think that I am not listening to you. I have been listening to you. This lady's name is Corby Midline. Okay, and she, I'm telling you, she has been a psychic for many, many years. Um, she's, as a matter of fact, I, 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 I call her, you know, something or, or that she refers to, and in, in not all psychics or mediums are known by this, which is a light worker. Okay, and a lot of people don't realize that there's such a thing within that a compendium of what do you want to call it psychics or mediums or intuitives or sensitives or whatever that are light workers. And uh, we're going to ask her later on about that, uh, what that truly is. But before I get into it, because there's so many things in, that she's done for so many years that I'm going to bring her on and let her tell you guys about everything she's done is she has years and years and years of experience in this field. How are you doing today, Corby? Wonderful, except for the snow outside. We're yes, good. We were talking about that. <laughs> yes. Um, do you know what? It's really funny because I tell everybody, this is how you know you're getting older. When I was in my 20s, about the only thing I cared about was, is it going to be sunny so I can go to the beach? <laughs> but it, the temperature really didn't matter to me. And now you, well, I was surprised what you said about the snow. Myself, I'm over here because um you know as far as crops and you know temperatures and planting and over here now that down here it get, can get really cold colder than when it was in south florida but yeah you you pay more attention to those things as you get a little bit older but that's crazy weather though that's incredible it it is insane you know i'm uh way on the eastern side of new york state right near the massachusetts border Massachusetts is New England and the old saying is in New England if you don't like the weather wait 15 minutes <laughs> and that's really what it's like in the spring here in eastern New York State 70 yesterday snow today and tomorrow and then 50s and 60s on Saturday so it'll melt 
and the leaves are coming out on the trees. It's nice. I was going to say, like, I imagine, I imagine the majority of people put their coats away and all their winter clothing and stuff like that. So it's like, some of us haven't even gotten our snow tires off. We don't do it until May 1st. Everybody knows, so everybody knows better. Everybody right? know better. That's exactly right. That is great. But I'm going to ask you, Corby, what I ask all my guests. How did you get involved in this? Were, were you psychic? from childhood was it something I, i've heard of people having an, a, an event that triggered this ability what happened with you all right uh this is what i call my 32nd elevator speech and i'll give you a little bit of an epilogue as to how you know you're probably going to do the wiki book um when i was nine i read a book called the witch family by eleanor estes and instead of thinking "Ooh, that's scary or ha 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 i thought and your point is I knew there was magic in the world. I wanted to go find it. Okay. So fast forward to 1973 when I was a senior in high school. And yes, my darlings, that does tell you how old I am. Um, working at Spencer Gifts, they had the James Bond 007 tarot deck and I bought it. I mean, wow. we were all hippies then. I had the nice. elephant bell bottoms and the fringe jacket and the tarot deck. Now, five years later, everybody else had moved on to disco balls and roller skates. Me, I was still reading the cards because mm -hmm. I found them fascinating. I love the stories they told. So I read for friends for 20 years. In 1994, all of a sudden I could do hands-on healing and talk to dead people with no training. I figured that's when the universe handed me my draft notice and said, greeting, you're working for me. Okay. <laughs> so I hung out my shingle part-time while I went through many, many careers, actress, author, inspirational speaker, legal assistant, video producer, uh, writer for a very famous uh, graphic novel fantasy series, and executive recruiter for engineering and manufacturing. But I always did this work on this side. Okay. 9-11, as we watched the towers burn, I turned to my husband, I said, I need to do this full time. People need to know there are other answers out there. He said, okay. I believe in you, go do it. So for a year, I still worked 70 hours a week as, as an executive recruiter and did this evenings and weekends. And once I was sure that I could make a full-time living at this, mm -hmm. as I say, I cheerfully, figuratively peed on the desk and left like, from where now. I was. <laughs> and yeah. I've never looked back. And this has been full-time basically since 2002. Wow. Um, six days a week. I read about a thousand people a year up until the year of hold my beer last year um i was on the road 45 weekends a year going from expo to expo and fair to fair my friends were calling me the travel channel but between a herniated disc and the year of murder horn and bingo you know the doctor said you are not traveling anymore but the universe had uh -huh. managed to morph my business over so that i do work online constantly you know i have clients in Bolivia, they don't want to come up here to Cobleskill with the sheep and the cows. Right. So, you know. Thank God for the internet, right? It, it, yes. And you just move into a different form of what you do. Okay. You said, and, and I know, how did you realize, was there something, an encounter, an experience that you had that you said, you know, as, uh, let me quote from the sixth sense, I speak to dead people or they speak to me. What happened? It has to do I think with the first time I really, really got clear on a past life. I had done some work before uh -huh. and had picked up a life. It was very interesting. I found out I was, let's, let's, okay. There was a rock star in the 1980s that I was absolutely enamored and obsessed with and I don't do that, but I was, and he was with a Philadelphia band. And I became friends with one of the band's friends, and, and, and. She was also very interested in the kind of work that, that I do now. And I remember we had figured out that I was uh, 1783 or four, mm -hmm. um, Scotland, and that I had known him then. I'd also known the other guy who was at the head of the band. And we figured out everything except we hadn't gotten the name of the band member I was enamored of back then. Okay. And over linguine and clam sauce at a mainline restaurant, I heard Marcus Barron, Gordon Huntley. I'm thinking, what? what's this two titles? People don't do that. 
But I went the next day and found a copy of Debrett's Peerage, which is the everybody who is everybody okay. in England, in the UK. And I looked it up and in 1752 was born Alexander, 12th Marcus of Huntley. And in 1783 or four, he was named Baron Gordon of Huntley, Marcus Baron Gordon Huntley. Now, my specialty back when I was in college was Tudor and Elizabethan England. I never looked at okay. 18th century anything. Okay. So that was boom. And once I did a lot of the past life regression mm -hmm. work, which I don't have to go into here, I realized what the connection was. And as soon as you realize a connection like that, you can let it go. Overnight, okay. I became absolutely uninterested in the band and him, nothing because I had learned what I needed to learn from Pennsylvania. What do you, so, and, and the reason why I say this is, I was, I'm not a practicing hypnotherapist anymore, but when you start talking about life regression, do you think on a subconscious level, whatever it was that you needed to recognize, connect with, identify that, like you said, that was the, that was done. It was a done deal. And because I wasn't hypnotized and there is a huge, no. huge, huge difference between past life regression Mm -hmm. and past life retrieval, which is what I do. Okay. And people need to understand the difference. Past life regression must only be done if you're working with somebody else, uh, with someone who is certified hypnotherapist or past life right. therapist, because if you get into a tough situation, you see yourself dying or gang yes. raped or whatever, they yes. can pull you out. Mm, yes, If you're just course. doing it for shits and giggles, somebody else may not be able to pull you out and it could do you massive oh, amounts yeah. of no no damage. no you you absolutely and i had a lot of clients you know you know there's there's a use of what they call anchors i had a lot of mm -hmm. clients that sometimes came with expectations of oh i know i lived in whatever times i had to be anne boleyn because i can't wear turtlenecks yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> okay well there you go you know they'll square up and down and and uh you know once we get them to like let go of the analytical part of their mind under under hypnosis mm -hmm. sometimes they're kind of disappointed they have very riveting experiences but it's not what they expect yeah. and i said well you have to understand maybe what happened to you then right now you're not ready to see it <laughs> because you're just not there right now and some people don't realize that even though it's you're seeing it's not it's not me it is you and mm -hmm. if it's something like a very dreadful experience, including your death. Yep. It's uh, people can get sucked into it firsthand. So yeah, uh, you 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 hear a lot about that. People will swear up and down. Mm -hmm. I know I lived and during that time, and and nothing surfaces. I'll go. It doesn't mean it didn't, but you maybe where you're not ready right now. Well, but um, um, but that's that is how I found out about the past life that I deal with most. Um, I knew nothing about World War One. Was terrified of Germans because of everything I'd heard in World War Two. Nothing. So what, but, what did you think when you? And I want to interrupt you. When you found that out that you went and I you did that um, that research, and you verified this is. Did you ever make sense of it? Why all of a sudden that's it? Your interest in this person. Obviously, what I had. Well, my interest in that person from before was illegitimate, incorrect. I tried blackmailing them with my pregnancy at that point, which okay. got me killed. So that, and ah, so. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. Okay, so if, in other words, yeah. okay, I see, I see. That's so interesting. And yeah. then it's like you, yeah, you. then you're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. And we'll exactly. use that, that overused word called closure. <laughs> yes, know? yes. Um, so retrieval. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes a lot simpler. Um, retrie retrieval is where you ask me a question and I go up to the Akashic and I pull down the book and say, read chapter two. The example that I use most often is um, I was one of the major channels in Rob Schwartz's book series on pre-birth planning and life between lives, your soul's plan, your soul's gift, and your soul's love just came out. So he and I were lecturing at Lilydale, very okay. famous spiritualist community. Yeah, I've been there. And a girl was in the audience Butch, short hair. She raises her hand and she says, can you tell me why I am so terrified to have wet hair in my face? Even one strand, I start to hyperventilate. I said, okay. Uh, in about four seconds, I said, you have a five syllable answer, Lusitania. 
1915, you were one of the passengers on the ship which got torpedoed. You went over the side. Your hair had not been bobbed yet. You still had the big Edwardian mass. Mm -hmm. So there was more hair to take on water. Plus it was long enough that debris kept getting caught and pulled you down and you drowned. She looked at me white faced. She says, is that why I'm scared of boats? I said, probably. Wow. Wow. And she had her hair very so, short, I take it? Literally, uh, practically Sinead O'Connor, two weeks due for the cut, <laughs> yes. I mean, butch short. Yeah. So, yeah. but from there on in, I explained, you're not going to drown this time. Mm -hmm. You can grow your hair if you want to. Did she? I, I don't know. Right. But she knew what, where the fear came from so she could step over it. Right. That understanding kind of sometimes mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. the difference as far as why, it, especially like you said, when you have these phobias that you just can't understand, why do I feel this way when I have no explanation or, or prior experience that why I'm scared. Sometimes people have fears, but there's a reason, you know, but those, uh, that's, that, that is, people don't, you know, so I'm going to ask you, I take it then that you yeah. believe in reincarnation then. Hell yes. Okay. Cause I, I, you think I we're smart back. enough to get it done in one? No, no. of course not. <laughs> of course not. No. Okay. And do you believe, um, in the theories that, that, that we're, when we go through the cycle of different lives, we're born within, with the same group of people or acquaintances or whatever you want to call them, family. Not all, but you know, this is you're talking to a psychic. People come to me and say, mm -hmm. I want to know when I'm going to meet my soulmate. And I said, <laughs> okay, honey, sit down. We've got to talk. <laughs> what they're usually talking about is the twin flame, but soulmates are our core team and we have lots of them in my life my father was my best friend he was a soulmate my last husband no this husband mm -hmm. yes my spiritual mentor for 25 years and then she and i blew up for several years and now we're friends again so was she twin flames are bogart and bacall okay paul newman and joanne woodward yes um the people that you cannot imagine them with anybody else, even, you know, Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, even though they kept bouncing back and forth. Right. Um, and they don't always come down. My particular twin flame still up there because I knew I had so much work to do re-raising myself this time with a mm -hmm. very traumatic childhood and the work I'm doing now that to have a twin flame to suck up all my time would not work. Right, and everybody so, always, uh, the connotation for people with soulmates is a romantic connection. As in, I'm going to meet the the ideal person. Yeah, that soulmate oh, it's, thing. That's your core team. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to make new karma, you got to end up with new people. So in okay. my life this time, I never had met my mother's soul before. She always had karma with my dad. Right. But this was the first time, and she and I have created karma that we'll deal with in future lives. Okay. Right. And you understand that, and it's like, mm -hmm. and, and it, the, I guess with that understanding is what you said. It's in the future, it'll be taken care of. Maybe something now is just not the, the timing is not right on it. That's right. And karma is not just carrot and stick. That's so important. Karma, as Rob Schwartz talks about, is five things. Unbalanced energy, which is a neutral, mm -hmm. healing, service, contrast. If you want to learn about abundance, you have to be both rich and poor, and healing of beliefs. Okay. So exactly. that's why this time, um, you know, most of my lives, it's 80 20 male, female. The female lives are my really tough ones where I come in and do a lot of the work. Um, and so this time, I came in with a karmic idea of learning to honor the female body. Okay. And I mean, I was built like Dolly Parton brunette from the age of 11, but um, because of very traumatic stuff in childhood, I, I, I had a very um, dangerous, okay. prolific, problematic, 
life for years. I got cancer twice. Oh, First time was lumpectomies and radiation. That's when I was acting in New York. Second time was skin cancer from the radiation. They were misshapen. They were scarred, but they were still there. Mm -hmm. I still hadn't figured things out yet. And so I got cancer a third time. Primary took the clock back to zero. But they said, okay, sorry, three strikes, you're out. We're taking the rack and we're taking the ovaries and you're going to go from this Dolly Parton figure with mm -hmm. a libido of a 17 year old boy to a fat fire plug with permanent side effects in three weeks, suck it up. Because okay. spirit was saying, we need you down there to do the work, honey. And you haven't managed to get okay with who you are in that body. So we will remove the problem. So you think that your appearance was getting in I the way? So. Okay. I know right. so because of what I was taught. Okay. I was taught with a figure like that, I was not allowed to say no. Mm -hmm. I was a walking tease. Okay. I was never gonna get married because guys would only. Right. And you know, and this was from my mother who okay. was very dysfunctional herself, alcoholic cross addicted with barbiturates. Okay. So when you get those messages at 16, they stick. Yes, they do. They do. But long ago forgave her. I love who I am now. Mm -hmm. I teach with what I've gone through. Okay. Um, you know, it's like one of the things that I have learned through a great group called the Option Institute in Massachusetts is no matter what happens to you, you can choose how you react. Yes. So did I go home and cry for 24 hours? Yes. But then I decided I have got to find three reasons that I'm okay with this. I don't care how stupid they are. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, you don't have them. You can't get cancer there. Right. You're not going to get slammed in the refrigerator door at the doctor's every year. And every woman listening knows exactly what I'm saying with that one. Yes. Yes. And plants, cool. I'll be perky till I'm 93. <laughs> Got out of Massachusetts General Hospital in three days, shopped for a bathing suit and five. And that yeah. was 2004. And here I am. There you go. Yeah. Because you're, and people don't realize so much depends on your mindset. It does. It does. This may be where the light worker stuff comes in, but trust me, guys, light workers are not all glurpy purple with angel cosmic muffins. Sometimes <laughs> we're the kind that'll hit you upside the head with a clue brick. Let me ask you, when you were in the hospital, mm -hmm. as a psychic, did you have did you have any encounters with people that had passed on or no? No, 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 no. I have a deal with my guides that shop open, shop closed. Okay. And at that point, I had to deal with myself. Okay. And I said, shops closed, curtains are drawn, because I need to get myself through this. Okay. Do you think, and I'm going to ask you something. Do you think yeah. you have, um, because you mentioned guides, and I know people think of there's certain guides that are with you for the duration, you know, and then there's others they say that they come and go depending on what's going on in your life. What's your thought That's on that right. as far as guides are concerned? Difference between angels and guides. Okay. And do you remember the Venn diagrams we had yes. in that yeah. class? The overlapping. The middle part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to think of angels and guides as a donut. The mm -hmm. little hole in the middle is angels. All angels are spirit guides, but not all spirit guides are angels. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have at least one angel that is with us from birth to death. They have our names in the back of their tunics like camp tags, you know, I belong to. But yeah, spirit like guides grow and change the way we do. You don't have the same teacher from kindergarten to PhD. My first really known spirit guide was someone that I flew with 100 years ago in World War I, fellow pilot, saved each wow. other's lives. Um, can I still talk to Carl Amo? Of course I can. But I now do more work with my own particular guardian, guardian angel. Uh, okay. who has given me the name Baruchiel for him. All right. Um, and I expect things will morph and change and grow as I do. Um, okay. Nobody can do it on their little onesies. We just aren't that smart. Okay. And so do you think then that there are certain guides that show up like sometimes people say, you know, if they're having difficult times, it's just something that they're going through that there's a certain guy that comes in and helps them navigate whatever it is that Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Um, I was in a car accident. Okay. Black ice under snow. 
uh, overcorrected, took down a tree, a telephone pole, flipped my car, electrical wires on it, no seatbelt on. At no time did I feel like I was going to die. It was an e-ticket to Disney. And I know that that was both my guardian angel and Carl Amel handling the car. I got out of there with nothing. Nothing. Wow. A little, little stiff neck. That's it. Okay. So, yeah, they're there when you need them. Um, spirit guides can also be people that you knew and loved. Uh, you've heard me talk about my father being my best friend. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a superb cardiologist, beloved okay. by his patients. Um, and so he will sometimes show up when I'm doing medical intuitive work. The okay. story I love to tell about that, this was way upstate, Thousand Islands area, about 10 years ago. And there was a woman, she was 94 and she was still a nurse. God bless her. Yeah. Um, she said, could you just do a check and see how I'm doing? And I hear my father rustling behind me, you know, the side of the, the white coat. And I uh -huh. point to the empty air and I say, I'd like to introduce you to my father, Dr. Jerome Dorkin. He was a crack cardiologist and he still does consults. So I open up. Now, remember, I know from nothing, zip, about medicine. But the first thing that comes out of my mouth is what's with the T waves? She looks at me, white face. She had just had an electrocardiogram done where her T waves were abnormal. What Ooh. did dad do as director of the heart station for 30 some years? Read EKGs. So I look back at, at my father and I say, you know, you're still a pretty damn good doctor, even if you are dead. He laughs. So yeah, yeah, they love us. And for anybody who's wondering, no, that doesn't mean my father is stuck on earth. Um, think of it this way. All right, I'm going to show you my audiovisual aid. Okay. This is our soul <laughs> right. right here. Much too big to fit in these little bitty bodies. Mm -hmm. So part of our soul comes down to animate with certain traits, personality traits. And then when you die, it just absorbs back up. Right. So when, you know, my father is dead 20 years now. He's completely in his full soul self. Right. But when his daughter needs him, he puts on the Jerry Dorkin suit and comes down. It's what there it is. Go. We hang up our personalities in the closet when right. we go up there. Right. And sometimes Which people is, don't understand. I'm sorry. It's ahead. also why if somebody who is evangelical Christian says, but the Bible says we're only here once, you smile and you say, yeah, that's true too. Because the soul is what incarnates time after time after time. Corby Midline, she gets once. Right. This personality will never come down again. And you see, that's that's the kind of thing they don't quite understand. So if you can explain it to them, it may get them right. thinking a little bit. Exactly. But the it's it's one of these things that we of course, which is the way it should be, we get hung up on identities. You know, mm -hmm. as in the one you're in right now. And uh really yeah, I love her point is. I'm gonna miss her when she's gone. Right, you know? exactly. And you're thinking what and, and a lot of people have a hard time understanding that you can still be you, but not the you you're, you identify with right now, as in name, everything, all your characteristics, right. Right. Uh, your history, whatever that might be. Think about it. You were in second grade, the chief windmill on your school play. And that was your whole life. And here you are 50 years later and you're going, okay. <laughs> that's what yeah. happens yeah you know um yeah our our soul still loves us and looks at some of the adventures we had down here and it's like looking at your your old you know summer vacation book from 1962 right the the what's the emotion i tell everybody when you're in high school everything is so important life or death you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you look back like you said 20 30 years and you're like oh come on all right <laughs> whatever <laughs> You know, but yeah. when you're there, it's like the uh, earth shattering, life will never be the same again. You read your diary. Oh my God, today was horrible. I'll remember for the rest of my life. What? Yeah. So total blank. Exactly. So. The emotion, the motion is, is gone yes. from it. You remember it, but it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> the yep. bed. Talk yep. about overblown. Um, let me ask you, Corbin, one of the things that a lot of people, if you want to explain it, uh, mm -hmm. that don't understand that that not all psychics are mediums. 
and that within the psychic, because I'm going to use the general term of psychic, there's, there's dif differentiations. We are all psychic, every one of us. Okay. Just like we all have 10 fingers. We can all pick out chopsticks. Some of us, if we want to, can learn to play scales and really practice and we get decent. It's only one Elton John. So the way I explain it is everybody has psychic abilities to some degree. If you practice, you can get good. There are some of us that I, you know, I wouldn't say I'm the Elton John of WikiWoo, but we love it so much. Okay. And it, it's such a passion with us that the universe says, yeah, you, you're working for me. And we all have specialties. Right. And I think so, that that's very true that, and you made a good point when it's, well, part of the practice makes perfect thing, but also that when you do something, which it's not work because it's a passion. Yes. It's different. You just, it like you do it. And yeah, there's days that you might get frustrated, but overall you come back to it no matter what. Right. And spirit will use what you've got already, for instance. Just like Catherine Hepburn, I have a slightly benign tremor in, in one hand. So I won't use a pendulum because I can't trust it. <laughs> okay. On the other <laughs> on the other right. And astrology, no, no. With me, one and one is three on alternate Tuesdays. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but, 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 but. Theater major. All right. Words are my drug of choice. I love right. writing and telling stories. Yes. And I love history. Right. So Spirit sees all of that and goes, you would be good doing past lives. Right. And how I explain that is somebody else might see a past life for you and say, I see you in a big hat and it's a long skirt. So I know it's old fashioned. I'm able to go, okay, hobble skirt, picture hat, that kind of ostrich feather in front of the Brandenburg gate. This is at probably Berlin in 1911 or 1912. Now, which one's going to give you more information? Of course. It's like, yeah, you pinpoint the time period, the country, or, yeah, like, in other words, you know, you look at the hairstyle, and somebody says their hair was up, and you're like, hey, no, that hairstyle was around in Edwardian times, you know, yes. blah, 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 blah. Yes, exactly. But that yes. also means don't expect every psychic to do everything. Right. Um, you know, going back to the psychic and medium, mediums are psychic. Right. Not all psychics are mediums. Mm -hmm. Mediums specifically talk to dead people. Okay. Channels are people like um, Esther Hicks who gets Abraham. Right. Or Pat Rodogast who gets Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. um, things like that. When they get another being or ETs or something like that, they are channeling information. Right. Okay. But it's not an uh, like a, per se like with a dead person where people come for a reading because... They want a connection to a specific person. Right, right. And we all do that also differently. Um, there are some mediums who just grab it. Um, the one that I still love, she's been gone for a few years now. Her name was Allie Cheslick. We okay. nicknamed her Chatty Kathy of the Dead because <laughs> when she connected... She may only have 10 minutes to do something, but she'd take 35. Okay. Just, now, that's not my talent. <laughs> I tend to like getting the dog tags so mm -hmm. I can do it very quickly. What are dog tags? For instance, my father, Jerome Richard Dorkin, who died in 2001 at the age of 80. Just who they were to you, their name, the year, and how old they were. Doesn't tell me much, but immediately gets me into the energy. Okay. I will then tell you what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you know that's Aunt Dora, say that's Aunt Dora, and I'll open up the door and you can talk to them directly. Now, there's a reason okay. that I don't do this in a public gallery. And I have um, a slightly off-color story and an on-color story that off I can explain it with. Which would you like? Off-color. Okay. Let's go. All right. This was in Canastota, New York years okay. ago. There was a biracial same gender couple. The black partner had died and her white widow wanted to speak to her. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the face of a little Jewish American princess from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who has manners. 
But as soon as I connected, what comes out of my mouth in flawless urban ebonics is, well, shit, it ain't my white bitch. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and the woman in <laughs> That's front great. of me starts laughing and crying and nodding and doing this because that is how her partner, Isabel, walked into the house after every business trip. Wow. Now, if I was worried about how that would come across, uh-huh. that wouldn't have been there. You're right. You're absolutely That would right. not have been there. So I have to be able to do it absolutely uncensored. And you cannot do that on stage and you cannot do that in no. front of an audience. Sure, sure. So. And, you know, and in this case, like you said, the person that's asking you absolutely said, my God, that's exactly what this person mm-hmm. would do, you mm-hmm. know, if they were there. But still, I can imagine there must have been people like that who were like, huh? I know. For some reason, the way spirit wants to work with me, it's, it's almost like charades. Uh, right. When I'm getting the information, this is if someone smoked, this is if they toked. Uh, mm-hmm. This is if they had surgery. This is if they had an accident. Uh, this is if they were Alzheimer's or dementia and the curtain was moved aside when they died. Mm-hmm. Um, this is if they were intubated on oxygen, having trouble breathing. Okay. And it just works. I, I, it's not conscious. It's just, it just the move. Mm-hmm. And there was a time when I found myself miming a pool cue. It was this girl's father-in-law who taught her how to play pool. Oh. I found myself doing a salute, but I did it the British Canadian style, not this, this. Okay. The person that we wanted to get had been in the, no, knew that their daughter was in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Okay. I see. And so yeah, those are things that are so. It's not it's a road she loves just, you. Exactly. Yeah. Now, let me, have you ever had somebody want to communicate or connect with such a person? And is it always a good connection? I mean, or. No. Okay. I tell people, we are not dial a dead. If Aunt Rose is on a field trip up there, she will not be by the phone. And it doesn't mean she doesn't love you. And it doesn't mean I'm right. not good. She's just not available right now right because i'm thinking to myself sometimes you hear people they won't and i understand that sometimes especially there's a love a certain level of grief involved they Mm -hmm. want to be able to speak to that person but i'm thinking Mm -hmm. if this person is doing whatever they're doing whatever what makes you think that they're just going to be like an on demand let me drop it everything and well it's not quite that bad up there because there's no time or space but um one of the things that i do is if someone keeps coming back to me to talk to their dead people, right? after about the third time, I'm like a good bartender and I gently cut them off because they're staying stuck yeah. and they're not helping the, the dead person evolve. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I think sometimes people don't realize uh, how their grief can affect that person, especially if it's a recent death, I imagine. Where uh, my rule is, I will not contact these people for 90 days after they die mm-hmm. because they're up there signing the guest register, unpacking their bags, getting the orientation tour, and they need to be able to completely drop the personality and get into the full soul and do their life review. And if you keep tugging on them after they've just died, it's like the little kid who's always doing this with mommy, 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 mommy. Of course. So my rule is 90 days, and people respect that. And yeah, and like I said, sometimes people are blinded, but um, now um, I'm going to go um, off in a different direction. And and this was something that, because I know we'll get later on into your books, but I know a lot of people ask me about this as far as the, let's go into the magic part. Well, everything is magic, but um, is there such a thing as, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say black magic curses, uh um yes i negative thought whatever of course i did not really believe in this kind of thing but um i have a a good friend who is an absolutely spectacular bruja her name is katrina rasbold she's uh out in california crossroads occult is her shop she's written books for llewellyn and one of the things that I found was I do a free reading hour once a month on my Facebook page, Fire Through Spirit. Mm-hmm. And these days people come in and poach. 
for instance, you know, people write questions and I answer between 40 and 50 in an hour. I mean, it's fast, fast, fast. Okay. But other people come in, you know, a Nigerian name, if it's okay, and they say, I am drawn to give you a reading, you know, direct message me. And those are poachers. Right. They're scam artists. They're going to tell these people that you've got a hole in your aura or a curse or you're blocked and it costs you $7,000 to remove it. Right. Well, I made a point of naming these and posting their names so my clients would be safe. <laughs> and I just kept the list going. Oh, and God. I'm sorry. I'm I'm daring. I just am. I noticed, but I noticed that business dropped off. Health was having a problem, and so what Katrina did for me is something called a limpia. L I M P I A. It is okay. Well, if your people don't, it's a cleanser. No, uh, exactly and, right. Exactly, and the shit that she pulled off me stunned me but once she did business came back no other problems i now have shielding around the house mm -hmm. and protective little mojo bags here and there and so i now understand curses are possible i had to learn the hard way but yeah, what she are. did she confirm for you that that was the origin of what was done against you that it was the you uh she <laughs> said that it had been been on me for several weeks okay so, so it wasn't sense. something okay i don't have particular enemies right in the wicked world that know enough to curse mm -hmm. okay normally we know you don't want that kind of karma right exactly but so. I can uh, sometimes, unfortunately, to get people upset, people get upset about things that I'm sure in your mind, you were thinking, I'm justified in doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you're coming in and you're trying to segue in and like you said, uh, take this More over. More than that, and you are putting my clients in danger. Right. With your $7,000 curse. Oh, yes. And people don't realize that, that you would think, who would fall for that? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. yes, there are a lot of people that, they get told certain things and they get scared. They really get scared. And, and then before you yep. know it, uh, it's all downhill from there. And then once you, that would, that, that, that's a, an interesting thing. W what do you say? Let me ask you now that we got onto that. What do you say to people who are psychics or working in the psychic field or thinking of doing it? You said something now that you have protection up. What would you be your advice to anybody that does this work? As far as uh... the brighter your light, the deeper the shadows. Okay. Now, remember number one, you're doing the, the, the good work. Mm -hmm. You got God, you got your angels. Right. And as the old 2000 year old man thing, when the 1960s with Mel Brooks said, there's somebody bigger than Phil. But at the same time, you know, God is not going to necessarily protect you from a car going by and splashing you with mud. Right. So it's what you do. Um, this is why the glurpy purple with angels thing doesn't work. Okay. A light worker knows the world is not completely light. We have to deal with shadow selves. We right. have to. Right. Not all, everything is tra la la. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, yeah. and I think sometimes that people that get into this don't, and I have seen some examples of it, that they want to make it look like everything is, like you said, uh, uh, rainbows and butterflies. And I call those people cosmic muffins. Yes. Cosmic <laughs> Well, and they, it's almost like if I don't talk about it or I say that it exists, then it, nothing will happen to me. And then mm -hmm. one day they, they, they have a rude awakening. Right. Um, for but, whatever reason. But you can't always assume I stubbed my toe, I'm cursed. That's no. the other direction. No, no, no. Yeah. And I know there's people that want to read into everything. You know, like you said, if, you know, like you're supposed to be living a charmed life and nothing negative is ever. Well, things happen. How you are know. you going to learn? Right. It's a human condition. No. Was I bad? Was I evil because I got cancer? No. no. That was part of my pre birth plan in order to get certain karmic lessons learned and internalized this time so I'd be a better teacher. Okay. And um, 
And I'm going to, even though I know you wrote your books as far as for people that work in the psychic field, what do you say to somebody out there who's going to go to uh, any a holistic, for any place where there might be psychics and they're thinking, I want to get a psychic reading? Okay. Well, that there's a lot actually, of them. How do you know who to pick? That actually is the entire purpose of my second book, The Psychic Yellow Brick Road, How to Find the Real Wizards and Avoid the Flying Monkeys. It was written because there is no other book out there that I know that helps you figure things out. You know, the tagline on the back is psychic guidance is art. Don't settle for a forgery. Okay. And the first couple of chapters, the first one is Psychics 101, The Good, The Bad, and The Cleos. And I use mnemonics. What's a mnemonic? PTA, Parent Teacher Association. It's the letters that spell out things you need to remember. Okay. So psychic is the mnemonic and it stands for professionalism, shared references, you are in charge, charges, theater, I can fix anything for a price, which is all the stories everybody loves, inappropriate actions and connections. Okay. Once you know what's safe, what's not, then the next chapter is how to have a great psychic experience and oh, I have to put the glasses on for this one. The mnemonic for that one is answer. And that okay. stands for accept responsibility for your part in the session. No pop quizzes, no comparisons. Mm -hmm. State your intentions clearly. Widen your horizons. Evaluate your information and respond to the universe. If you only read those two chapters, you are going to be in a much better place when you go for intuitive guidance. And the other thing is I did not write that book saying mwah, mwah, my aura don't stink. You can only come to me. There are 9 billion people in the world. I can't yeah. read y'all. So exactly. this book, it's one of those all boats rise thing. If you learn from this and so you go and have a good experience with an intuitive, you're going to tell your friends and good things will be heard about intuitives. Not, oh, I was so scared. Oh, they're all fake. Going, let's say you go to to some place where there's various psychics and they're all good. Is there a way to kind of hone in on the one that like to make you that connection, the best one that's oh yeah, that's called how to uh, how to find people at a psychic fair. Um, and I I've, I've lectured on this too. First thing you need to do mm -hmm. is um, you need to be good puppies. You need to go in and do your walkies. And you need to get paper trained. What does this mean? This okay. means that you go in and you just kind of do the circuit and just look at people right. and collect information from everybody that is of interest for you. For okay. instance, we all have flyers or rack cards. This is my rack card. You collect it, you see it talks about what I do. It has a couple of um, testimonials on the back. Okay. Go back and talk to the psychic if you can. If we're busy, talk to our front people. But remember that we hire our front people to say they love us. My first front person was my buddy, Laura. Okay. She was my husband's office manager Monday through Friday. Do you think she's going to diss Mrs. Museum Director? No, she's not. Absolutely not. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to find the testimonial books. We pretty much all have them on our table. And you can read, are we good? Are we funny? Do we have specialties, children, dogs, dead people? Do people come back to us? Were we accurate? Okay. But the last thing is guys, check in at heart level. Right. You are putting your hard earned money on the table. If the psychic doesn't feel like they have a brain in their head, they really give a damn about what they're doing, or they're going to give you good information, don't go there, no matter how okay. cool the wiki woo looks on the table. And if nobody okay. there rings your chimes, leave without a reading, there'll be somebody else somewhere else. Right. In other words, go with your intuition or your gut. Mm -hmm. do, that... do your research first, but this is final arbiter. And... Um... What do you say I, when somebody goes in to get a psychic reading and um, let's say yourself and there's something there that might not be so pleasant or might be that, do you tell the person or how do you handle stuff like that? I tell people, here are your opportunities and how to grab them. 
Okay. Here's the top stop. Here's how to get through it or around it. Here's your toolbox. Go rock and roll. Okay. We give you the toolbox. We are not the repairman. Okay. So in other words, you do tell them. You don't like. I do. I do not see when someone's going to die. Right. I refuse because, frankly, that's illegal in many, many states. Mm -hmm. No, and yeah, I can see that going. We have four or five different places we could leave. Right. And you decide, your soul decides as you approach one, am I leaving now or I still have work to do? How about I'm going to ask you the one that I, I know a lot of people, they go, go ahead. your love lives. I want to be with so-and-so. And you look That's and you're like, hmm, the where that's... the hell is he question. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, um, I tend to give answers that are empowering, but true. For All instance, right. let's say you wanted to date Butch. I would do a five card. You, Butch, the relationship, what you need to know and best possible outcome. If after that you say, well, I still don't know what to do. What should I stay? Well, I'm, I'm fine. You're going to get three threes. First three cards are status quo. You just bumble along. Next three cards are y'all have a gun to Jesus meeting and it's serious counseling or line in the sand. And okay. the last three cards are hostile. Bye-bye. It's been nice. I'll send you postcards. Mm -hmm. I will tell you what they say, but I will not tell you what to do because that takes your free will and puts it in my pocket. Okay. If I see that you really ought to leave, but you say, I guess I'll stick it out. That's up to you. Right. Exception. If you say he's beating you, he's abusing you. No. Then I put on my reverend collar and I say, honey, you have to go. Right. But yeah. if it's just that you can't decide what to do, you need to decide what to do. That's called free will. Right. Because I know that sometimes people go to psychics because, in other words, they, they they go in, they're looking for an answer, but they already know the answer that they want to hear. They just want somebody like a psychic to tell them. Oh, please. I must read you. There is a chapter in my book, and it is called When Getting Your Reading Won't Help. <laughs> and this is honest to God what it's like. Does Bruce think about me? No. Has he ever thought about me? Not the way you want. If I do such and such, will he think about me? No. Is he going to call soon? He isn't. Well, if he isn't going to call soon, will he call later? Notice this person is so desperate mm -hmm. for a relationship. She will not accept that it's not happening. She'd be better off with somebody else. She keeps beating on the psychic until finally the psychic goes, yes, yes, he loves you and he wants seven babies with you. He just doesn't know it yet. Okay. <laughs> Don't make us do that. My God, please. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, yeah, I know that there's some out there see, that see the hot flash. That's, that's what happens when you drive me crazy. Like right. That. When they, they, right. it's like, okay, okay. Maybe if I ask the, the right question, then I'll get the answer I want. So let me switch out mm -hmm. that question. Don't and waste you, your money or our time. Please. Have you ever had people come to you to put a love spell on somebody like that? You know, somebody like, you, you know what we talk about? I'm not getting the attention I want the way, the normal way. So... I send them to people like Katrina. I don't do spells. <laughs> I'm not a witch. Okay. I'm an intuitive. Okay. I'm a non-denominational rev. You want that? You go to somebody like Katrina because okay. brujas do not do good and bad. It's justified or not justified. Right. And so you'll you will learn. You will learn because remember, um, if you really weren't interested in somebody, would you want somebody going and burning some candles and forcing you to love them when you had no intention? Right. Put the and, shoe on the other foot. And this is the thing. And, and, and I'm at, there's people that it's like, why would you want to have somebody love you because you put a spell on them? Let's say mm -hmm. they don't care. <laughs> it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this person that was, if it works, let's say they're not doing it out of their own free will. Oh, I don't care. You know, I know. I know. So I imagine that, you know, that people sometimes they, they want to make, they want to bend reality somehow or other. Yeah, they do. And, and not smartly. What do we, um, as far as um, now that uh, somebody, you said, you know, you had spent so many weeks, you've gone to all the different types of fairs, events you name it. Mm -hmm. And I think things are changing also because now we have the internet and we have this, you know, people can basically um, communicate non-physically, you know, you don't have to be in the mm -hmm. same. Is yeah, the and quality I of people. a reading the same? Yeah. Okay. If I could only read you in person, how do you know I'm not reading your body language? 
Ah, good question. All right. Energy is energy. That's okay. that's all it is. Some people really do want to be with us, mm -hmm. but so we do Zoom or Skype. It's fine. Okay. I don't need to touch you in order to read you. Right. In other words, a psychic is doesn't that the proximity or the distance is really doesn't make a difference one way or the other. Makes no never mind. Mm -mm. How about every anybody, any psychic that's going out there that like you started that maybe they did the family psychic or and now they're ready to either go full time or the side hustle. What would mm -hmm. be your advice for somebody that's going in? To that beyond just uh... it's all in here my darlings ah there we go this is everything that i learned for you know 18 years 45 okay. weekends on the road what's in here things like the basics choosing which fairs to do designing your booth look dress for psychic success choosing a front person mm -hmm. the social approach professionalism with clients on a show circuit networking with fellow professionals keeping okay. in touch with your clients advertising and there's lots more too because look i i don't care if you try and do everything exactly that i do you're not me right um i mean one of the things that people really loved about me at fairs which made me an a-lister is because i didn't do the uh, seventh generation and blah 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 i said mm -hmm. look I'm dead dog practical. Okay. No glurpy purple with angels. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to meet a guy with blue eyes and a limp in a bar and I'm funny. Just deal with it. Right. So because I'm not someone who comes across like her aura don't stink, I'm very real. Mm -hmm. If you want glurpy purple with angels, there are lots of those there. If right. you want absolutely New York hello, I'm in your face. Mm -hmm. It's here. It's like when you sit down with me at my booth, first thing I'm going to say to you is what's the most important thing you want to walk out of here knowing? Because even in a half an hour reading, I don't get everything. So if what you really want is your career, tell me, we'll go there first. If you want your dead people, tell me, that's what we'll do first. Okay. Um, and if you just don't know, uh, you know, you go blank on me, I'll go Brooklyn on you and go, so what's biting your butt? Say it that way, everybody's got one. And they'll come out with it and that will get things started. And when you, when you, you basically, do you do as far as you use the tarot when you're giving them the reading or how does that work? I use not only tarot, I am a certified tarot master, mm -hmm. but I use a whole bunch of Oracle decks. Wow. And each one of these, has its own purpose. For instance, that where the hell is he question? This deck <laughs> is by John Gray, Mr. Men are from Mars and Women are from Venus. And so I will very uh -huh. often use what I call the four and four, four things you need to bring to the table, four things that if your partner doesn't have them, it's a non-starter. Okay. Um, I have a deck called the Fairies Oracle, and this is not your ootsy cutesy fairies. Um, these are the guys that go inside your head and rip up the floor tiles and give you homework. If you remember Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, the yes. designer is Brian Froud. Yes. That's for serious. And if somebody needs compassion, then I pull out my Ganesh deck. And you all know who Ganesh is, right? Right, yes. Those are the Hindu gods or the whole pantheon. Ganesh. Ganesh is the Lord of obstacles. It's, it's uh, just a Ganesh deck. He's the Lord of obstacles. Everybody in India loves Ganesh. They all have a little statue of him in the house somewhere. I say it's the equivalent of going into South Philadelphia. The Italian American grandmother has the peeling statue of the Virgin Mary out in the back by the tubes and the barbecue. It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's a gorgeous deck and it helps people compassionately look at what's going on with them and how to move through it. So okay. I've even got a deck for kids, Really? which if you're going to, yes, if you are going to be um, a reader out there, you need, I mean, here, see, kitties, family, Aww. healthy diet. And the reason is very often a mother will have her kid with her in the booths. You know, there's no one else to watch it. And the right. kid is fussing. The mom says, oh, can my kid please pull a card? You know, just one. And what am I going to do? The kid yeah. pulls a card and go, oh, look, Jimmy, dad. No, you don't <laughs> do that. You have a deck for the kids. 
You know, um, <laughs> years ago, I, I read at a bar mitzvah. And no matter what cards came up, the kids always were told three things. You've got a crush on someone and they don't know it. <gasps> You're having trouble with one of your school subjects and you haven't told your parents. <gasps> Oh, and I know that you've got something hidden in your room. You don't want them to find out. <gasps> you know, fine. Because <laughs> they're all 13. And it all happened. They were all the, ran off. Oh, my God. They get, yes. When the parents came, they would get a real reading. But a 13-year-old does not need this. Of course. It's one of the reasons of I don't read kids under 18 anymore. I just don't. Um, they don't need to know who's going to take them to the prom. The difference is I will mentor teens mm -hmm. um, if they're indigo kids or they've got spiritual stuff that's coming up themselves or they're just scared about the world. I started uh, a couple of sessions on my website, mentoring for teens to get them through the pandemic year. Okay. Yeah, yes. But that's a very different thing. That's what I call pastoral counseling. That's not what you yeah. do. Right. How about have you, since you've been doing this, have you ever had a negative or dangerous situation with any reading with a reaction of somebody that, Well, yes, sort of. Okay. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories. You know, I used to go up to Kitchener, Ontario three times a year for a very big psychic fair. It was four days long, you know, three to nine, 10 to nine, 10 to nine, and 10 to six. I'd read 70 people and do two lectures. Well, there was this one woman that I read and there was some tough stuff coming up and I told her. And she gets up from my desk and she says, you suck. She walks away. Okay, fine. Who's the first person back in my chair when I come back town next time? Yes. She sits down and she says, last time I said you sucked. I said, yes, I remember. <laughs> she says, you told me that um, I was going to take in a border and then I was going to sell my house. And I thought that was all bullshit. But then my daughter got pregnant and moved home. And now I'm going to sell my house to help raise my grandson. And I still don't like you, but I want to know what else you see. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Doesn't care. It's like. Yeah. And that's exactly, and that's why I'd asked you earlier about how much, you know, when you see things coming in, like how, how honest are you going to be? Because sometimes some people I imagine take things like, okay. And then others. But there was one really dangerous incident, but this is one of the things I talk about in my, in my book. Okay. Um, when people sit down with you, not only do you want to get their, um, you know, name and email, et cetera, for your mailing list but you also want to have a sample of their handwriting. Yes. Why? Because when I was in, again, Canada, um, there was a situation where somebody left a death threat on my table. Oh. But I had my sign-in sheet oh. and we were able to compare the handwriting on the note with the person who had come in and then the show promoter turned it over to the police. Because you have, in other words, you didn't have somebody sign them in. They would sign themselves in. Oh, I, they, they write it down. Yes. When they sit down with me, mm -hmm. it's their name, their email, their birthday. Did this person have a reading with you and gave you the death threat? He had a reading with me and he wasn't very happy and he got up and left. The next morning before the show started, right. I came in and found the threat on my table. Oh, yeah. People don't realize. People out there just don't. They. It's almost like they want to. They believe you too much. So it's like it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. And I hate mm -hmm. to say it. People don't realize sometimes there's people that uh, their, their grip of reality sometimes slips a bit. And they yep. do crazy stuff oh, like that. It's, it's one of the reasons why my legal name is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. the, the number that people have is my cell phone. Right. When I was reading under my legal name and I was using the home landline, I'd get calls at three in the morning. Hey, my wife left me. Is the bitch coming back or can I fuck the woman down the street? She's hot. No, <laughs> she, this is because I'm having a crisis. Can't you tell? <laughs> That's why I'm calling you at three in the morning. <laughs> please, please. And then, yeah, it's like your crisis is my, uh, it's interrupting my sleep time. It's like, yes. And uh, people don't realize people, there's a good, well, most, most people to some point are self-centered as far as the, they're the center of their universe. Mm -hmm. and, and you're like, but I, 
as Neil Grass, the Grass Tyson says, the universe does not have a center, so you're not it. I know, but some people don't want to believe that. So they're like, it's all about me. Yeah, um, they're the same people that think they're in Berlin because they can't wear turtlenecks, you know? <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Like, on yeah, so. Let me tell you something. I mean, God, God knows there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think now that we've gone into the 2020s? What yeah. do you think it's going to be? Because if you think about it, um, whether you want to call them soothsayers or seers or oracles or psychics or mm -hmm. they've been around since ancient times. Um, since Moses was in diapers, yes. There you go. What do you think is going to be the future of this field? Uh, as we get more technological, but I see that I do not think we're ever going to be replaced by AIs. I find that hard to believe, too, honestly, just... because AIs don't have souls. Sorry, mm -hmm. Data. Sorry, <laughs> you know, Soji, and now Picard. You're all sins. But as far as we know, AIs do not have souls, and oh people need to connect with people. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, there are apps where you can read your own tarot, yes. but they don't have 50 years of experience. Mm -hmm. um, you are going to open up your new business. They're going to flip two cards and say, fire the second redhead and wait until October. Me, I do an entrepreneur's spread. Energy for you, energy for the business, the brick and mortar location, how to market it, clients, competition, staff, finances, what you need to know and best possible outcome. Which one's going to give you more information? So, in other words, you do readings. Have it, it, almost like what you're saying. In other words, don't eat. I, I do. Don't see down. me when you're thinking of doing it. So you, I could, you could give them a point them in the right direction kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because look, there is nothing wrong with using my left brain experience. Okay. For years, I was an executive recruiter for engineering and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I counseled people in careers for years. So. If you want, if you come to me and say, will my new business be successful? I will look at you and say, and what if I say no, and you're going to lose everything and live in a box under a bridge? Wrong question. You ask what empowers you. How do I take my business to rock and roll? And I'll tell you all of these details. They may not all be great. You'll see where your pitfalls are. If we see that the business is not going to work, we talk about plan B. Mm -hmm. But that's why I'm not a fortune teller. I am an intuitive consultant. And there's a big, fat difference. Yes, exactly. And I think um, a lot of people, um, and I want to say maybe, especially like when you, like what you said, that they're, they're going to start their own business and they've, they're set on this idea in their head of what it's going to be like or how they're going to do it. Maybe because they've been planning it, who knows, for years. Or it's the, or like you said, you know, this is the time they called the quits on their regular job. Mm -hmm. So they're going off now and they're going to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe the idea is good, but maybe not yeah. the way they're, in other words, what, the way they're going to think they're going to get there is not going to take them where they want to go. Exactly. Exactly. You have to be ready to branch. You can't be so fixed mm -hmm. that. When the universe goes, yo, over here, you miss it. Okay, exactly. And and I think that uh, a lot of people sometimes they th there's something always there that, and I want to say for almost anybody that has uh, this is their first time step venturing into the business world, there's always going mm -hmm. to be the unexpected that's going to drop in your yes. lap. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Not more, more than once, by the way. <laughs> and it's like, what do you do when those things happen? Despite mm -hmm. your best planning, like, you know, that like, you have your business plan kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. And, uh, um, and, and if, if you want to do something, you have to keep your eye on goal. The way a ballerina spots on the wall and keeps spinning and her head snaps back to grab it. You can't just dance because you feel like dancing. You're going to fall on your ass. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, Corby, do you have any – those two books, by the way, are, are I think are fantastic. I like, And, and I told you Thank previously, you. I, I had never encountered any other author that's written book about those subjects at all. Yes, there's a lot of books about 
from psychics as in their lives. Psychic or, development. Yes. Right, this is, or, this is my life as a psychic yeah. and what happened mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, there's lots of them, but yes. not from what you're talking about. Not at all. Which is the practical. Because there is a practical, because basically it's a business, let's say for the person that's doing the practitioner, mm -hmm. okay, um, that you have to, the responsibility. I think that's great. Are you, are you, are you planning any other books or, or what are you going to oh, do? Oh, yeah. Um, well, um, I'm, my YouTube channel has guided meditations and tarot mm -hmm. spreads and things like that. I'm going to be doing more guided meditations. Um, because as I said, words are my drug of choice. I have a trained voice. People love them. So I'll be doing that. The book we didn't talk about was my first yes. one, which is called Clean Out Your Life Closet. And that's self-help. Yes. Clarity, adaptability, simplicity, and making friends with stress. It's the first of three. Okay. What I'm working on now is book number two called The Big Reboot. Now that title was chosen back in 2016. Okay. But how right is it now after we're all coming out of the year of lockdown? How do you want to reboot your entire life? Yes. So that's this year's project. And then next year, the third volume is Be Your Own Masterpiece. So I'm having fun. And of course, I'm doing readings. I did five today, uh, okay. you know, five one hour readings along with another podcast earlier. So my life <laughs> is let me tell you something. full. Yes. Let me ask you that first book and, and mm -hmm. that you mentioned. Are we talking here as far as um, I want to say clutter? on the psychic level? No, no. Um, we've all bought self-help books. We all have. Mm -hmm. They have sexy covers and great titles and we flip through a couple of pages and it looks maybe good and then we get it home and it read it and say, what do you mean I can't eat any foods with leptin in it and I have to meditate at four in the morning every morning? I'm a mother of two kids in Milwaukee and I'm a teacher. She's nuts. Uh, exactly. So. Yeah, it goes on the shelf. This book is not like that. Okay. This book specifically says when you are in charge of your changes, all possibilities are on the table. Okay. So each chapter, I tell you some of the stupid things I did, talk to you about a client of mine who also did stupid things, and then I give some suggestions. But the key is this. You've got what I call the adventure pages, which have no right or wrong answers. They're specific to you. For the chapter, finding happiness with what you have right now, the first question is, how good are you at finding happiness in the moment? If you aren't good, what do you think stops you? Now, how would I know that? I don't. You know that. So that if you read that book and you answer all those questions at the end of each chapter, that becomes your personal manual. You know that, 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 that question right there will give people a lot of pause right there. They'll put it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because that makes them very uncomfortable. What you just said about finding happiness and they'll be like, but I show you how I show you how I did it. And you can decide, do you like doing sure. that? Does it sound useful? Yes. Um, Cause the whole thing is, you know, I keep going back to one of my favorite odd sayings, my aura don't stink. I don't have a perfect life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, exactly. But sometimes People who write self-help books try to come across like they've got all their answers now. No, right. you're not going to have all your answers until you're two weeks dead. But this is what I figured out so far. Maybe it helps. What? Oh, God, I can't remember. This was uh, this was a few years back. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast about, I think it was, I want to say it was either psychic or something. I can't remember self-help and something like that. And they were talking mm -hmm. about exactly what you're describing where um, they there was a couple that would go to these self you know these holistic festivals and they give talks but they were like self help gurus like the couple mm -hmm. and they were like Esther and Jerry Hicks probably no it wasn't no it wasn't Esther and Jerry Hicks it was somebody else not as well known as Esther and Jerry Hicks okay. but they were like the couple like the perfect couple kind of thing. And this mm -hmm. person says, they didn't say names, but he says, but I was one time going up in the elevator. I guess they were staying in the same hotel. And they're like having this horrible fight. Like, Rrr. and he was like, you're like, I, I want to get off the elevator. And it's like, man, if people yeah. only knew that these. You don't want to see backstage. 
you know? <laughs> this perfect couple that does all this self-help and uh, like what you said about maybe relationships and couples and blah, 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 and perfect marriages. And, you know, they're ready to put out a hit on each other. Um, and I think that sometimes uh, something that you said about self-help, I think self-help is great, but there comes a point where you got to take responsibility for yourself and what you want. It's not a one size fit all kind of deal. And, yeah. um, and uh, you know, I, I understand where people like to hear stories about people that make it or said, like what you said, hey, this happened to me and mm -hmm. this is what I went through and this is how I found it. But what works for one person, including the author, might not be, you know, your bag, baby. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they, they the, the hand-holding can only take them so far, especially when it comes to the self-help. And I think when, when you yeah. said originally that some self-help books overly promise, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we will answer all your questions and you will live happily ever after and right off into the sunset. No, 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 no. But the only person a... who can fix your life, my darlings, is you. Oh That's boy. It. Yep. That is, that is the absolute truth. So Corby, um, for anybody yes. that wants to reach out to you for reading or to look at your books, what do, are you on Facebook? Do you have a website? Oh, can you, you can't, you can't avoid me. Um, <laughs> you go to my website, which is corbymitlai.com. You'll see mm -hmm. all the kinds of readings and consultations I do. You can also order my books from there. Okay. You can get my books also on Amazon. All of them are Kindle and paperback, okay. but uh, Clean Out Your Life Closet is also an audio book which oh, I did a recording of. Um, you can find me once a month on the Fire Through Spirit page mm -hmm. on Facebook, uh, where okay. I do free readings on Sundays. Okay. Uh, what else? Go to my YouTube, and that's where all the guided meditations are, and I'm going to start a series called Corby Gets Candid, which are pithy little five-minute videos where I hit you upside the head with a glue brick. And <laughs> what else? I think that's where I am for now. Okay. I think that's where I am for now. So are you staying put? Is that what you're saying? Or are you going to be going out to do? Uh... I will do shows within like two and a half hours from here now, which would be Saratoga okay. Springs, mm -hmm. Syracuse, Cortland. But my long traveling days are over because the herniated disc of the pinched nerves in the back are going, uh, 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 no more 10 hour drives, kiddo. Of course not. No more yeah, sitting for 14 hours in a booth. People realize that that, yes, that can really be like a, and again, Corby, I want to thank you so much. You have been absolutely wonderful. I'm going to have a link to your website on the credits of the show. Thank um, you. It's been absolutely, I think it's refreshing to speak to uh, somebody like yourself who's a psychic, but there's a practical part of it, which is, yes, you know, that you don't, in other mm -hmm. words, you don't live uh, all day going, mm, yeah. <laughs> No, I have two Maine Coons and a little pocket rocket of a ginger rescue boy. Ain't no way I could just sit and meditate. They need food. They need uh, catnip. They need brushies and toys. <laughs> that's it. There you so. go. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to speak to you, okay? Take care and good luck on all your projects. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Likewise. Bye-bye. So how was it, guys? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? I know. I had people saying, Marlene, when are you going to bring back a psychic? You haven't brought back a psychic. And I did. And I found a great psychic, by the way. <laughs> you know, and I, I, and the reason also, which I think is one of the things that interested me about Corby was that, I'm serious, the books that she's written, whether it's that you're looking to get readings or you're a person that is psychic or sensitive or intuitive, whatever, however you want to. And, um, and you're considering like, Hey, uh, I, maybe I want to do this more often. Maybe I feel the time is right. Just like she said, you know, uh, she was doing it, uh, part-time while she had a real job, but there came a point where she said, okay, this is it. Um, not going to look back on this and going to go full time. And I'm sure there's people out there, especially now, uh, because let's say this last year, so many people have been disrupted from their workplace and what they did for a living. 
that, uh, and by the way, and you know, and I, and I forgot to ask her about this, but I'm going to say she probably would say a lot of times uh, psychics or people doing readings, however, whether it's tarot or whatever, sometimes they have a difficult time charging for their services. You know, let's say you've been doing it for friends and family and, you know, for fun or whatever. And, and now you decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to try to see what I can make a go of it. Maybe part time, see what happens. You know, maybe go to a couple of fairs in my area or, um, you know, let's put up a website, whatever. And I, some people think that because of the nature of the work that you shouldn't charge for it. And it's like, no. You have to um, charge a fair price. What do you think is a fair price? I mean, I'm sure maybe, you know, you could do. I remember when um, I started doing the hypnotherapy work. I mean, I looked at uh, I looked at what other hypnotists were charging. And, um, and you know, sometimes, especially when you're new, you feel like, you know, my overcharging oh let me tell you something i re i look back now and i realized the beginning for like maybe the first three months i was undercharging it was like people people got really lucky they got really inexpensive top-notch hypnos hypnotherapy <laughs> because i was like huh and then after a while um i even got to the point that i you had to make a deposit to make an appointment with me you had to give a 25 five dollar deposit and you have, you know, you could cancel to 48 hours before and you would, I would either refund your money or change the uh, appointment, you know, depending on what you need to do. But, but uh, if you tried to cancel on me, I kept the deposit because I got to the point that my time was really important to me. And at the beginning I had seen, I, I was like, wow, I asked people for a deposit on an appointment. And guess what? you find out that whoever's really, truly serious about seeing you for whatever your services are, are going to agree to that. And the point is uh, that, yeah, that this, you know, whether it's a reading or whatever it is, it's, um, it's a service that you're providing. It's a service, you know, there's people that, you know, you, you provide, let's say tangible or intangible services. Uh, but uh, don't, um, by no means shortchange yourself. Or you might even have people that will say, come on, you're really gonna, you're really gonna ask money for that? Yeah. And something that she pointed out very, very astutely, which was you, like everything, I, I don't care whether it's playing the piano, playing tennis, or developing your psychic, abilities or anything, anything in life, practice makes perfect. And if you, this is what you really love, what you really like, you're going to, uh, you're going to attenuate better. Like she says, you know, if, however it is that you get your messages, everybody's different. You know, some people see, see, some people say in their mind, clear audience, whatever the case might be, the more you practice it, the more easily you recognize signs and how to interpret them. Let's say you're giving somebody a reading. Um, so, and I think a lot of people, like all human beings, you know, you, sometimes you're thinking, well, you know what I've been doing with it, some friends or family or, you know, people that what's the worst they're going to do. They're going to look at me and go, no, you know, or whatever, you know, in other words, you, there's really no, there's no fear of rejection, which is what none of us really like is rejection. So can you imagine you're doing this for a person who's a total stranger, who's paying you money to give them a reading? And this is something you have to be prepared for in believing in yourself because, you know, there will be people who will tell you, you know, the psychic, you know, will sometimes give you things that are dead on. And sometimes they will tell you things that you're like, Whoa, oh man, like that lady, the one that told her she sucked. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you're totally wrong. You're really off on this. I mean, to the point that that lady told her she sucked, but she was back. She came back. Why? because she was on the money. The point being that sometimes you will say or things that, what, that's the best way of putting it, are not pleasant or disturbing or is gonna, 
even sometimes change. And people don't want to hear that. But that doesn't mean you're wrong. And there's a difference. And, you know, sometimes things don't, it's not like also that uh, you're going to walk out the door and whatever you told was going to happen is going to happen. It might take maybe weeks, a couple of months, whatever. You know, and then by then, of course, how are they going to get back to you and tell you, hey, by the way, you were right. You know, when you told me that, I thought, sure, sure, uh huh. You were right. So, yeah, I urge you to um, to visit Corby's uh, website. I'm going to have a link to her uh, website on the credits of the show. Plus, for the podcast listeners, you did hear... Um, you know, what uh, her website is, uh, again, you, you know, if you want a reading, uh, if you want to, um, you want to like, maybe, let me tell you something. She's, if, I mean, besides reading the book, if I was a person that was thinking of going into this, I would think of her, man, she would be a great mentor. She would be a fantastic mentor because, you know what? Um, I wasn't serious. I think that um, this is this is for those people that say, man, you know, I just found out how easily I could be replaced in this last year or how easily. I, I agree with her. I, I don't think that uh, psychics or whatever you want to call them can be replaced by AI or by machinery or by robots or by, you know, whatever, because it's just not there. I mean, yeah, they came by, you know, what was it, the $6 million man, faster, stronger, whatever. Okay. But when it comes to this, um, I doubt that you could be replaced. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this for those people because I know there's people out there saying, oh, Marlene, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know you're know, you talking only to what younger people that are making decisions. And I'm like, no, no, no. You know what? There's a lot of people who have been psychic and they've had that ability for years and years and years, but the majority of their adult lives, they've had to be practical. They've had to be down to earth. They had to make a living. They had their children. They had a house. They had, they had responsibilities. And it was like, I, you know what? I wish I could go off and do this, but I can't, I can't afford it or I'm afraid, whatever. And now finally they're a little bit older and maybe their families have grown up, the level of responsibility is gone, or they've even retired. And they're actually now can fulfill that dream of venturing out there and doing this work, whatever it is. So by, by, by all means, I'm not saying like, oh, for those people that are still in the work phase, if you're younger and now there's a side hustle. No, I mean, this, this, this can apply to many different people across the board. And you know what? Sometimes I hate to say it when you're older, besides the economic aspect of it, that maybe now you're able to, as you get older, sometimes you stop worrying so much about what are people going to say when you're younger? You're like, Oh man, what if this turns out bad? What if I make a fool of myself? What if I, what, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and as you get older, you kind of start letting go of that. Oh, okay. So who's, Who's, they don't like it too bad or, you know, or, you know, you're, in other words, your skin is thicker. Even if you're an introvert or a shy person, as you grow older, you kind of lose your shyness or your fear of rejection and your skin is toughen up and you realize something very important that not being liked by everybody doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You don't have to be liked by everybody or that, um, what can I say? Um, that if, that in other words, you are more, um, uh, set on doing something because sometimes when you're younger um let's say you you start talking about oh you know what uh there's a there's a psychic fair or a holistic fair or what anything and i was thinking of maybe renting a booth and uh you know i've been reading the tarot or whatever or doing a psychic read, whatever however you do it and I, I i was thinking of going out there and see what happens you know and then you'll get the the, I want to help you, but not really help you. It could be your parents, your siblings, your friends, your husband or your wife or whoever. 
telling you, oh, you sure you want to do that? I mean, that's, is that kind of, in other words, they, they're trying to supposedly help you because so you won't be disappointed or why are you going to do that? Are you going to spend that money? And no, oh, but you know, and when you grow older, you kind of don't care. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I want to try it out. And uh, I don't need your approval, <laughs> by the way, in case you're wondering that I'm going to do it. So again, coming back to what I was saying, um, for anybody that's going out there and deciding to, they want to do this kind of work. Um, in other words, maybe come out of the closet. Maybe you've been a psychic all along. Who knows? Maybe you've been a psychic for 50 years. Um, you, you're a clairvoyant, uh, whatever, and you just kept it to yourself because you didn't want to be that person in your family or that person at your job or that. And you're like, that's it. I'm not I'm only going to come out of the closet, psychic-wise speaking, but I'm going to go and I'm going to set up a booth and a table and I'm going to go and read Corby's books, which is what you should be doing. Again, guys, thank you for being part of my audience. You're all wonderful. Again, I'm working on my books. Um, go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com. There's a, a submit a story tab if you've got any interesting stories you want to submit. Again, I have links to all the podcasts and videos, whether the videos on YouTube. It shows you also links to all the different platforms that you can find me on in uh, on the internet, whether it's Stories of the Supernatural, which are these interviews through Miami Ghost Chronicles. I also do the podcast series, uh, Supernatural Storytime, which is at SupernaturalStoryTime.com, which is scary story telling. Um, and then there's Nightshade Diary, where I read different stories, ghostly horror, classic ghost stories, English ghost stories. Um, a lot of the authors like H.P. Lovecraft, also those uh, those authors that were into the pulp fiction, like Weird Tales. I read a lot of their stories, which some of them are great. You know, some of them have been forgotten in time. And, and I'm thinking, man, some of them wrote some of these stories 100 years ago. But when you read them, they're they're excellent. They're excellently, their imagination is still, you know, that came up with these stories 100 years later. They're still very intriguing. But anyway, if you like that type of story, go to nightshapediary.com. So again, guys, thank you for being part of the audience. And as always, it's a pleasure to be with you every week and again come back because I have a lot of great guests uh, coming uh, on Stories of the Supernatural. Take care.